Welcome back to Moms in Baseball. This is episode 33, and I'm Stephanie. And I'm Diana. Today, we're going to talk about how to take better sports photos. So originally, we thought about interviewing a photographer for this, but we decided we wanted this to be for the absolute beginner, just a parent trying to grab some better shots of their kids. So I thought the advice might be more applicable coming from a super beginner amateur hobby photographer like myself. So um, take everything I say with a grain of salt. I'm not a professional, but hopefully I have enough experience playing around with some digital camera photography that there will be some helpful advice in here. And after listening to this episode, you will be able to take some better photos. Um, also, if you are listening to this podcast on like Spotify or Apple Podcasts or whatever podcast directory you usually listen to, know that today's episode is also going to be on YouTube. Um, it'll be a more raw version of the episode because I'm not going to cut stuff out and I'm going to include some pictures and things like that, that obviously I can't share with you over the podcast, but if you're listening, it should be just fine. Um, it'll just be a little bit shorter because I'll cut those parts out. So uh, as we mentioned, I'm not a professional photographer and I've never even taken a class in photography. So everything that I do know is just from playing around with my own camera and YouTube. So there'll be some things in here that you might say, I don't know how to do that. Well, search on YouTube. I might include a few links myself, but that's how I learned what I learned. Um, Diana's not giving herself enough credit. Like I, <laughs> I copy her pictures all the time. She does a wonderful <laughs> job. Thank you. So don't let her lie. Thank yeah, you. She, Thank you. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At the end here, I will share some, some of my favorite photos and then just some bad ones too, just to show you what not to do. <laughs> um, but my first piece of advice, this is going to be kind of ironic or hypocritical, but my first piece of advice to take better sports pictures is don't take them. Let somebody else take them <laughs> because <laughs> right. This is for me. This is totally for me. <laughs> It's, it's, it's a lot of work and it's really nice to be able to sit back and watch your kid's game and not have to watch it through the lens of a camera. So um, first and foremost, if there's a professional photographer at your game, like if you if your school has somebody that comes around and takes pictures and posts them, or they do that for the local clubs, I would strongly recommend put down your camera. Don't take pictures that game. Um, I just feel like it's a little bit disrespectful because they're doing this for a living. And so and I, even though I have a thousand pictures that I've taken of my kids and pictures that I really, really like, I will almost always purchase a picture when there's a photographer there because I don't know, somebody took it and it wasn't me. And it's probably a lot better picture than I would ever take. And they're usually very reasonably priced. So if there's a professional there, yeah, maybe just consider using their photos. And also I'm just going to put a little plug out there for them. Please don't steal their pictures if they post them on social media. Um, even if they have a giant watermark across that, that's still their property. So you can share the photo, you can tag yourself in the photo so that your friends can see it. But if you want the picture and, and you wanna use it as you would like and you don't want the watermark on there, please buy the picture from the photographer. Um, secondly, if there's a parent on your team that takes pictures and shares them with all the parents after games, um, let them do that and treat them like royalty because that is a lot of work. Um, not only are they watching the entire game through the lens of a cam camera as opposed to sitting there and just enjoying the game, but they're probably going home after the game and sifting through hundreds or thousands of pictures and maybe even doing some post-processing. And it's just a ton of work. And in my experience, it doesn't take very long for people to kind of take it for granted and just sort of start expecting like, hey, when are you going to post all my the hundred pictures of my kid that you took today. So just, <laughs> and maybe some days they have a camera and they just want to take a couple pictures of their own kids and that's okay. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, so yeah, that's my advice is don't take the pictures. If you don't have to let somebody else, but if you want to do it, or you just want to learn how to take better photos or you have, or you're one of those people that just really enjoy it. Um, I'll give you a few tips here about how you can take better pictures. So the first one is to get as close as you absolutely can to the action. So as a parent, you're probably not going to get a pass to go sit out on the field 
right? Like some, that's another reason why the professional photographers are going to have such great photos is because they are often like sitting on a bucket or something out on the field. We're not going to do that, but you can get your camera right up to the uh, fence, you know, obviously be careful. So you're not going to get a foul ball back and crack your phone or crack your camera, but you can get right up to the fence so that your camera is looking through the fence. Um, or and that's where I like to go if I'm behind home plate is that, you know, maybe just off to the side so the ump isn't in the way. And then for people that can see this, if you've got the lens hood on up against the fence that protects um, so that the lens isn't right up against the fence. If you do happen to get a foul ball straight back, you can go down the first or third baseline and you can hang over the fence there. Maybe have a person there spotting for you so you don't get a foul ball to the face either. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, just get as close as you can. It's hard to get, if you don't have an expensive zoom lens, like a very expensive zoom lens, it's really hard to get a decent picture of, of outfielders, especially an action shot of outfielders. So walk out towards the outfield to get those pictures. And you want to try to fill the player in the frame as much as possible. You don't want a picture where the outfielder is just like a tiny little dot in the middle of the picture. You want them to fill the photo. So, you know, you can use a little bit of zoom, but just get closer to them. And along the same lines, get low to the ground. So you'll see professional photographers at like football games or things like laying on the ground, taking the pictures. And, you know, maybe you don't want to be the parent like that dedicated, but you can just <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, sit in a pretzel on the ground and uh, you're, it just makes the kids look kind of like larger than life. It makes them seem, I don't know, a lot more impressive when you kind of have that angle from, from down below looking up. I like that. That's a good point. Um, and then you want to try just getting a few different angles sometimes, um, at games, like I'll say, you know, I want to take pictures, but I'm not like that dedicated to it. So I'll just find a place to sit. And that's where I'm going to take all the photos for the whole game, knowing full well that I'm sacrificing some really good shots because they're all from the same angle. But if I really want to take good pictures, you need to find a few different angles. So, um, I mentioned before you can go behind home plate or slightly off to the side and that's that can be a great spot to get good shots of pitchers. You can get like their face and it almost looks like they're looking right at you. Um, there'll usually be like a little space in between the batter and the umpire where you can kind of like zoom in and focus to get the pitcher straight on. Um, <laughs> I totally lost my train of thought. I had mentioned before, <laughs> you can go down the first baseline and the third baseline. So those are good for different reasons, whether you're trying to get pictures of right-handers, ba right-handed batters or left-handed batters or right-handed pitchers, left-handed pitchers. Um, obviously, if you're down the first baseline, it's going to be better for shots of like third base and left field. If you're down the third base side, it's better for first base and right field. So just try to get a, a few different angles and then also um, you're gonna have to go back and forth a lot for righties and lefties. So sometimes I'll do like a couple innings all from one side and then I'll go over the next inning and get a few from the other side. So I'm not going back and forth, back and forth for a team that you know has a lot of right and left-handed batters. Um, you're gonna wanna look to see what is in the background as you're taking your photos and that will also determine what angle you're going to be from. And I will, for people watching on YouTube, or if you want to go to the website, I will share a photo of Xander, my son pitching. And there's like a giant portage on in the background. <laughs> and this is like at our home field for rec. Ball. So I should know better. This is when I first started taking pictures. All I had to do was take a few steps one direction or the other, and I wouldn't have the portage on in the background, but <laughs> just look at that. So the background doesn't look super messy. Um, obviously you want to keep in mind the angle of the sun. We won't get too, that used to overwhelm me to think about that, but just know that you don't want to shoot into the sun. So that's the easiest way to think about that. You're, you're going to have terrible pictures. They'll just be like silhouettes, unless that's what you're going for. Then that could be artsy and cool too, but usually you don't want to shoot into the sun. Um, it can be really helpful to anticipate action, which sounds like you're a fortune teller or something, but really it just means sometimes you can kind of guess what you think might happen or just focus on something and hope to get lucky and hope something will happen where you're focusing your camera. And the most common way that I would do that is if I'm focusing, um, especially at the younger age levels, at the younger age levels, when the bases are really close together, runners are stealing all the time. Like if there's a runner on first base, unless he's like 
the slowest kid on the team, he's probably going to steal second base really early. So in that case, especially if you've got a runner, a fast runner on first base, you can focus on like the front corner of second base. If you're behind home plate or wherever you are and just kind of hold the camera, whoops, and then just kind of hold the camera there and then wait for it to happen. And then as he's sliding into second, you just start snapping away and taking pictures. And you like you're the paparazzi. <laughs> you just keep going. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. You just keep going. If there's, if there's a ground ball, um, instead of trying to follow the whole play, because it happens really fast. And if you're not practiced at it, it can be tricky. Just immediately you could go right to the first baseman and focus on the first baseman and try to get like the play at first base, just start snapping away and hope that at some point in time, you caught the ball going into the first baseman's mitt. So those are a couple examples of that. Um, as much as possible, you want to try to catch facial expressions. So when you're taking pictures, also remember that you're not just trying to capture the play. A lot of times it's helpful to keep taking pictures after the play, because that's when you'll see, you know, like kind of like their disappointment that they just got thrown out and they're kind of like oh, making like a crazy face and their hands might be up in the air, or you'll see the kids, you know, celebrating after the, um, you know, just called them out or whatever it is, but those can often be the best pictures are after the play. And and again, you want to try to get their, their it, as often as possible, it's going to be a better picture if you can get their face in it and not the back of their head. So you always want to think when you're looking at angles, try to get an angle that's going to have the player's face in it. The other thing you want to try to do is try to get the ball in the photo. So there can, there can be good photos without the ball for sure, but those are those are going to be the most like highly coveted photos are going to be when you can see the face and you can see the ball. Those are always great pictures. So absolutely. I love those. Yeah. So like in, in some of the things that people like to try to catch are like the bat right on the ball as they're swinging or um, the player catching the ball at first base an outfielder catching the ball. I think that's one of the hardest shots to get as an outfielder catching the ball because not only are they so far away and it's hard to even get a lens to reach that, but it's almost like if you could imagine, you know how it's hard to find a target that's far away through binoculars, you know, to find oh, yeah. where your target is. And so you're following the ball as it's happening trying to see where the ball is going and trying to find your target. Um, it, that's a really hard thing to do. So kudos to photographers that have figured that one out. Right. Yeah. Uh, but another one, you know, with the ball in the photo is people like to try to get the ball right before the catcher catches it, like right before it goes into the mitt, or maybe even right as it's going into the mitt and the dust is flying everywhere. So those are just some like standard baseball shots that a lot of people like to try to catch. And a clue here or a hint, a cheat, I guess you could say it's more of a cheat to, to get some of these, um, to get a lot of bang for your buck for these like anticipating type shots are to take pictures during warmups because during warmups, you know exactly what's going to happen. It's predictable. You know, the first baseman's probably going in order. He's going to throw a ground ball to the second baseman. The second baseman's going to throw it back. He's going to throw a ground ball to the shortstop. So it's a great way to catch the second baseman and the shortstop and the third baseman um, fielding a ground ball and making a throw. And the same thing with the outfield. That's where you could maybe practice making it look like they're catching a fly ball in the outfield. Now, parents are always going to appreciate more pictures that are actually from, you know, that game winning play or whatever than they are warmups. But especially if you can get the background out, it can still make it look like a pretty, pretty great shot when it's from warmups. And I do have a couple examples of those, or at least one example of a, one of my favorite shots that was taken during warmups um, that I'll yeah. show later. That's a good idea though. I mean, yeah. And Sometimes you don't even know. You're like, oh, I don't know what play that was even. And you're like, ha ha, it wasn't, it was warmups. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly. And one of my last tips is to just do some very simple post-processing or editing. This is something that I don't know a ton about. And I feel like if I spend a ton of time trying to edit something, I make it look worse than it looked before. So I am not the <laughs> expert to go to, to talk about editing, but I would say that there are just a couple things that you can do to make the photos look so much better. And again, I'll have an example of this uh, later on, but the, the three corrections that I think you should always make are to straighten the photo. Um, meaning like, you know, if you had your camera tilted and the fence is all, you know, at an angle in the background and it just kind of looks horrible, like you can straighten the photo very easily with the crop tool. 
crop the photo to make sure your target or your subject is filling the frame and they're not just like this tiny little figure in a big picture. And if you want, like if the lighting is kind of off or it just doesn't look right, you, you there's usually, no matter what you use, there's probably going to be like an auto button, like auto correct, auto fix, something like that, where it will, will adjust the lighting, the highlights, the shadows. Um, and usually that will make it look better if you're not happy with how it looked before. But sometimes that auto button can go overboard. Um, so if that happens, usually... Um, just you can adjust the color. It'll it'll want to add tons of color, and it can make your photo look just really kind of fake. So usually, if if I if I use the auto button, I'll usually take the vividness or the saturation, whatever the color slider is, and take that back down to zero. And I personally like to use Lightroom as my free photo editor. It's just on my phone. Um, like I said, it's free. You can pay for it and get a bunch of extra features, but you can do quite a bit to make photos look better with just that free Lightroom option. Um, and then finally in post-production, if you take a picture, especially if you're like really zooming in or if you didn't have a lot of light when you took the photo, it'll look, it'll have a lot of noise or which means it'll look like really grainy. And I think those pictures tend to look better in black and white. I don't know why that's just a thing you expect you I think you're more forgiving with the graininess in pictures if they're in black and white than if they're in color so if that's something else you could do to kind of salvage one of those pictures nice good idea so my last piece of advice and this is the most important one so this is where we'll spend a <laughs> lot of time is to so pay attention yeah <laughs> is to understand your camera so a lot, I see people constantly asking like, what, you know, I want to take better pictures. What sort of camera should I get? And I kind of feel like a lot of times you can take really great pictures with the camera you already have if you just knew how to use it. So it doesn't make sense to me to go spend thousands of dollars on equipment. Um, and then it's still not going to take a good picture if you don't know what you're doing. So watch a few YouTube videos figure. And honestly, iPhones take really, really great pictures. Like I don't have an iPhone. Um, and I'm really jealous when I see the kind of photos people can get off of an iPhone, especially if it doesn't require a ton of zoom. Do you have an iPhone, Stephanie? Yes, I do. Yeah. And you always say, let's use your phone. And I'm like, but I don't know how to work it. So I make you do it. And then you take the pictures and they do. The cameras are pretty amazing on the iPhone. I will say that. Yeah. They are very nice. Yeah. And I'm sure that there's high-end Androids that have great cameras too, like mm -hmm. a Samsung Galaxy or something. I never have a good phone. So my phone never takes <laughs> garbage pictures, but if you have a really good phone camera, you really can take decent pictures. If you just use a few of these tips, if you actually want a camera or if you're like me and you have a crappy phone, so you need a camera. Um, I start, I, I shouldn't just say I started with, I have <laughs> what I started, with, <laughs> which is a, an entry level DSLR, which basically just means an an entry level digital camera and it's a digital camera that's specifically designed to have whoop, where's my camera there to have interchangeable lenses so this can screw off and I can put a different lens on so that's going to be what a DSLR is um and just to give you an idea the one that I have is a Canon T6 and so and I we're at like T7 or T8 now I don't even know but I specifically got an older one um I should say an older, did I say rebel? It's a Canon rebel T6. No, you didn't say rebel. Okay. Well, that's important. <laughs> I actually got that advice to get this from a baseball mom Facebook group. And everybody was like, if you oh. take good pictures, this is what you need to get. So that was one of the first things I went to a baseball mom Facebook group for was to figure out what camera to get. And I, it was a great suggestion. It's been a great camera and it's going to run around like maybe $400 with a lens and a bag and all the basic necessities that you're going to need just to give you an idea. Um, but one of the first things that you need to learn on your DSLR is how to focus. So the main thing that's going to set apart kind of a crappy photo or mediocre photo from like a great photo is how well focused it is. If you're actually able to focus on the eyes of your subject, this is what your goal is always going to be, or usually is going to be. <laughs> so um, and this is where you're going to have to use YouTube to figure it out. Cause I'm not going to tell you how to do it on everyone's camera, but if you plan to take action shots, and that's what we're talking about for the most part here with baseball is you want to find out how to set your camera 
to be on continuous autofocus mode and on a Canon, like what I have, it's called AI Servo, AI Servo AF. Um, and when, and it's pretty easy. It's not like a complicated thing to put it in that mode. When you put it in auto, the continuous autofocus, as you're holding down the shutter button and following your subject as they're moving, it's going to continuously refocus the shot. Um, so that's really important if you're trying to get focus on a moving subject. So, um, and if you want to be more complicated about it, so that's how you're going to focus is you're going to hold the shutter button halfway down. That's usually going to be the default mode on any DSLR. So if I can find my camera here. The shutter button obviously is right here and you're going to hold that halfway down. Um, if you want to get fancy, which is what I've done, and I think it's significantly easier. You can do a simple YouTube tutorial to figure out how to back button focus. So I'm using, I, I basically just programmed a, a button on my phone to focus and I'm continuously holding that button down as I'm taking pictures. So it's constantly refocusing in that mode. And that has been a lifesaver that really helps to get you better pictures. Um, and then you also can turn on a continuous shooting or burst mode, which means you just hold the shutter button down and it's going to keep taking picture after picture after picture. So, um, and that's really great. Like I said, if you want to keep taking the picture after the play happens, or if you're trying to catch the ball coming off the bat or whatever, you just keep holding the button down and kind of hope to get lucky. And <laughs> hopefully one of those frames is going to catch exactly what you're looking for. <laughs> Use that continuous burst mode. And that's one reason why people will have like thousands of picture after a game is because for every play they're holding that button down and getting eight photos from every play or whatever. Yeah. You get your one money shot out of your 30. Exactly. Yep. That's the, that's the basics of what it would require to take better pictures of your kids when they're playing sports. Um, if you already understand all of that, if you understand your camera fairly well and, and how to, put a good picture together and you want to upgrade equipment. Um, like I said, I have a Canon Rebel T6. I love it. Nikon's going to have a comparable entry-level camera again in like the $400 ish range. So the next step you could look to is adding more lenses. So like the lens that came comes default with most cameras is going to be like an 18 to 55 millimeter, which I like never use. I almost never use this lens. Mm for sports. And I want to say this cost about a hundred dollars. I use the 55 to 250 millimeters. So it zooms a little bit, but I got that one because it, it picks up right where the other one like leaves off. Cause this one was 18 to 55. This is 55 to 250. It just made sense to me. I don't know. And I actually really like it. It doesn't zoom quite as far as I would like. You can get the three, the ones that go up to 300 for about the same price but I don't think the lens is quite as good. This is what I almost use exclusively for baseball um, and it works great. The only other lens that I have, and this is again, I think about maybe like $80. I don't think it's quite a hundred dollars. This is a 50 millimeter. It is not a zoom lens. The nice thing about this though, is that it has a really, really low aperture. So this is a great picture to like really get someone in focus with a lot of that bokeh. So if you're close oh. to your subject, like if you're right behind um, or if you're right near home plate and you can get a picture of the batter that way, or if you're taking pictures into the dugout or something like that, where you can actually be really close, um, this takes phenomenal photos. Um, if you want the lens that professionals use and you have $2,000 plus to spend, <laughs> And I'm very jealous of you. And right. <laughs> um, you can get the, did I write down here what it is? I can't think of it. It's the F. You wrote it. It's on the bottom. The last, the oh, last there you go. Yeah. It's an F 2.8, 300 millimeter. So that's going to be this giant long zoom lens that can do the wide open aperture and it's, they're just expensive. There's no way around it. Um, you could also look at upgrading to a professional camera, but you're looking at the difference of like, if I were to get a, a Canon Mark IV instead of a Rebel, it's a difference of $400 to now $2,000 or $2,200. And really the only difference, and it is a big difference, but the really only difference that you're, pay, you're paying for is that it can take more 
photos per second. So it can take like seven shots per second, as opposed to two and a half shots per second. So like, you're more likely to catch that, get lucky mm, and catch more that of the action shots for because it's, yeah. there's just more pictures. And then the other is that it has a much stronger ISO. So basically you can take better pictures in darker conditions. Like I can't take very decent photos in a gym or during a night game because there's just, my camera just is not powerful enough to deal with an action shot with that much light. I could take a still shot with a lot of light, but an action shot, because you have that fast shutter speed, there's the camera just can't compensate. There's nowhere else for it to get the light from. So it's going to take crappy, crappy action photos in dark conditions. So anyway, that's what you're looking at there. But again, if you have an iPhone, I mean, you have to really be interested in photography to want to do more than just what your iPhone can do. Cause it's going to be great. So, um, again, if you're listening on your podcast directory, that's going to be it for today. If you're hanging out on YouTube, I'm going to show you some of those pictures and we'll go over that. I don't remember what I was trying to show in this photo. Oh, so this was just an example of, of angle. So we'll talk about a few pictures with different angles and what you get. So with this picture of Keegan, I don't per personally don't love for a right-handed pitcher because you're, I'm mostly just getting his back. Right. As you can see. So this is me just being lazy and just showing you the difference between, <laughs> um, if you're on the right side or the wrong side. Um, oh, there and again, go. this is another example of kind of like a crappy. Ooh, I like that one. Well, I talked about how I liked it because I was trying to get the, the dust in the glove and this is yeah. on max catching, but I don't love the angle because you get a little bit too much umpire booty and yeah. <laughs> no profile. So I should have moved a bit farther, you know, down the third baseline here. Um, and this is an angle down the, again, down the third baseline. I like to stand for Xander because he's a left-handed batter so I can get his face as he's batting. And then you'll also see, since he often plays first base, this is from the exact same spot. It's not really that great of a photo or anything, but it is a good angle to get. It is a good angle. It's a good angle for plays at first base too. And then yeah. you have a right-handed pitcher. This is a better angle than that first picture I showed of Keegan to also get. Right the picture. Yeah, but you're focusing on Xander. I like that. So this angle here is cool too. Show you from behind home plate. And normally I wouldn't compose it like this, but there are certain situations where you're, you're going, there's more to the story than just the action that's happening. And so here, this was Xander batting against one of his friends pitching. So I kind of wanted to get both of them in the photo. And Oh, here, first of all, this is the raw photo. Um, and I wanted to show the difference between just like right off of your phone and without even doing anything special, but uh, straightening it. You can see how the fence is all. Crazy. Oh, yeah. Just straightening it and cropping it can make it just look so much more professional. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah, that's just the difference there. And also it's a better angle. As you can see here, I'm slightly down the third baseline, not the first baseline. So we get more face mm -hmm. back. And here, oh, this is, I, the reason I put this one in here, because this is not even a great photo. You can see a little bit of fence shadow. It's crooked, the light, <laughs> but I'm standing in the exact same spot I was when I took that pitching photo. So while it was good for oh. him pitching, if you don't move, it's not a great angle for a right-handed batter. Cause I'm just getting his back there. Um, oh, he must've been getting <laughs> right-handed that day. <laughs> this was to show you uh, the, oh. how you should anticipate. So obviously he never even swung the bat here, <laughs> but you can focus on the batter and just click away as you, you know, you're kind of using your peripheral vision to see the pitch coming in. And you just start shooting away and you never know what you're going to get. So I didn't get a hit here, but you could see the ball had just <laughs> hit the dirt and bounced up and it hit him. And it's one of my favorite pictures. I love it. Right. He's so flexible. Look at those legs. <laughs> so this one, I hate how I cropped this photo. Like it's so, it's way too tight, but here you can mm. see the portage on in, <laughs> in the background. And I think that's why it's cropped so tight as I was trying to crop out the portage on. Right. Um, yeah. Look at the background too. Like take that into account. So you'll see with the next picture, this is the exact same mound. Oh, here I'm down the third baseline. And isn't that yeah. a little bit nicer back? Yes. Yes, it is. Portage on. 
So, and then I, I have a third picture with my other kid pitching same mound, but again, I think the portage on's like over here. And so I'll mm -hmm. take a few steps over and it's not as nice as that green background, but at least we don't have a portage on there. Yeah. It still is better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this was to show you just something fun you could do if you don't like the background. So this one had a really busy background with like all the equipment and people in the background. And so I just played around on a free thing and made the background black and white and kept him in color. So, oh, that's cool. This was to show an example of what Boca is. So this is just Christmas lights. If you focus on something really close to you and there's Christmas lights in the background, it just shows you how the background can kind of blur out of focus. And this is a photo to kind of show you using just a tiny bit of Boca. So Max is in focus right here, obviously at the shortstop position. And while there's another fielder in there, it's not distracting too much from him because focus is on him. So I would have been using a wider aperture in this to get that effect. And here's what happens when you can, can happen when you're shooting through a fence. So be careful, <laughs> not focused on the right thing. <laughs> Um, and then this was just showing you how you could some, how, normally I don't like to shoot this far away from a fence, but sometimes you don't have a choice or you're just lazy. And I'm pretty sure in this instance, I was just feeling lazy, but I really liked the effect of the fence in this picture. I always, yeah, you, I was just going to say, I was like, do you have the fence there? Cause you can just barely see that it's there. Yeah. And so as you can see that Max's face is right in between this. Yeah um, diamond. So if you, you have to, you have to do that because I'm trying to focus on his face. And, and so I, I would have moved to an angle to make sure he was in between the netting to make that happen. But anyway, that was just to show that sometimes you can use the fence and it can still be okay. And then this here too, I did because I like the fence. Oh yeah. With the shadows. This was the That's only one, one I yeah. filter on. I, I did use a filter on this one to try to keep the focus on max and not the kids in the background. Um, here's one that's actually out of focus. I did not do a very, you can see the focus of the picture is probably like, oh there. yeah. But this is one where I would have done that, where I would have anticipated the steal happening at second base and was just pointing the camera and waiting for the action, which is also another reason why it's not focused great. I didn't follow the runner in um, and I probably moved the camera at the last second or something. But the reason I kept this photo is because this is Xander making the tag. And this was in <laughs> Alabama a couple of years ago. And I remember specifically that his dad called the runner safe. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we're using it as evidence. Yeah. yeah that's this nice evidence that dad was picking on his kid. <laughs> um, this photo I used, cause this is probably my favorite photo I've ever taken. Cause I was actually able to really get the focus truly on the eyes. Yeah, this one is really good. That's what you're always trying to go after. And I just like how like dialed in he was. That is good to know. I always forget that. Like you want to focus on his eyes. So when yeah. you put your camera up. So this one is, there's actually nothing that's really great about this photo. The reason I put it in here was because you can tell in this one, I got fairly low because I'm, I'm quite a distance away. I, I would have been behind home plate taking this photo, but you can tell that I got fairly low. So even though he's probably like nine years old here, it just makes him seem like, I don't know. It just makes you seem like more of a present, oh, yeah. than like a little nine-year-old kid. Right. And so even for little kids, it makes it fun if you can get real low and just kind of make them look larger than life. Um, I put this one in here cause this is actually, you know, to a normal person, this would actually be just kind of like a normal crappy photo. Like there's all kinds of junk and food and garbage in there. <laughs> but, you know, I just wanted to show that you can look for things, look for more than just the action shots or whatever, because this photo was like a meaningful one to our family, because this was one of the last games that Max played on this team. So this was him. I showed up to the game really late and it just so happened that Max and his cousin were the two that were sitting out mm -hmm. and saw them sitting next to each other and just like, was like, Oh my gosh, I don't know if this will ever happen again. And, Aww, and yeah. the shot. so sometimes it's more than, you know, just trying to get the best action shot. And so I had a couple other examples of these where there's nothing special about this, but this was Max and his best friend. And they happened to both be in the same frame while they were on the field. And I thought, Oh, I want to grab that. Cause it doesn't happen every day. Mm -hmm. And this was another one of my favorite photos that I took, Oh yeah, but it's like, you know, just don't always just look for 
game time action shots because some of the other ones in between the action can be the best photos absolutely another one here nothing great is happening but obviously the story here wasn't <laughs> what was happening it was what my child looked like <laughs> and this was just to prove that I did get it clean the next, <laughs> next week and I was, was very nice. very proud of that <laughs> <laughs> so we do have an episode our very very first one if you want to go back and learn about how to that get is right all pants clean there you go there's proof mm -hmm. of it. oh and I I I, I <laughs> I gave them little masks and I did not do a very good job <laughs> because they're not my kids and I didn't want to use their that is nice. their parents' permission. But it's their masks. <laughs> like mm. <laughs> I didn't want to like scribble their faces out. So I thought I'll try to give them a little Oh, oh I get it. <laughs> they're like sleeping masks. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking like masks and face, but you're like, nope, over the eyes. <laughs> yeah, like superhero. Oh, but, um, nice. This was another one where I said, it's, it's clearly not during a game. This was like a balls in coming down type of thing. And it was a bad throw from the catcher, but it's still one of my favorite photos. Cause I love how they were all like, you can't see their eyes, but they're all dialed in. They're all moving the same way towards the ball. And yeah, I like that. Up. So you can get cool pictures in between too, even if it's clear, it's not a game shot. Um, another one, just to show you nothing cool about the picture, but I saw both my kids right next to each other on the field at the same time. They don't often get to play together. So mm -hmm. I already snapped that. Here's Keegan doing what Keegan does. Um, that is I, one of my favorite, like it's the coach <laughs> and the the player kind of, yeah, like yeah, good so job. This is, this is one that is, can be fun to get after a home run is the, mm -hmm. the high five from the coach. And if you can get the celebration at the plate, those are great. For some reason, I'm never good at getting those. I don't know if I'm at a bad angle or if I'm forgetting to take pictures at that moment, but <laughs> I, it's like, I tune out once I get the slap from the coach. Right. Right. You're like, I'm good. Now he's yeah. going to hit home plate. I'm done. Yeah but that must be the last one because my arrow went away. So anyway, there's a ton of examples, probably more than you needed. And we'll put a few of those on our website as well. On deck for next week, I think we plan on talking with Mark, Coach Mark Hammond of the 11U Hit Dogs. And that's a very elite 11 U team that travels all over the place. Um, they are based in Michigan outside Detroit. So we are going to talk to Mark and pick his brain next week. Until then, sorry. No, you're <laughs> Keep going. Oh, it's you. Until then, have fun in the fields. We'll see you next week. <laughs>